Hey, welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I just wanted to let you know that uh, we're going to start a four episode series on over the counter pharmacology uh, where we're going to go over the medications in order from gastrointestinal, musculoskeletal, respiratory, immune, neuro, cardio, and endocrine. And that is the easiest order to do it in. So you want to do it in that order uh, going from uh, those that you probably know the best to those you might know the least. And these are all in the Memorizing Pharmacology, a Relaxed Approach, second edition book. Okay, welcome. I'm going to be recording Memorizing Pharmacology, a Relaxed Approach. And in this book that I just finished up, I've got a section on over-the-counter medications, and I recommend uh, that students go into the over-the-counter aisle uh, and look at these medications as a way to interact with them. Uh, where you can't necessarily get back behind the pharmacy right away in your program and this might be a way to help remember them. Uh, I also see this video being useful if you're uh, from another country and you'd like to know a little bit more about how over-the-counter medications work in the United States. Uh, many of these medications you can simply get from the pharmacy, uh, outside the pharmacy. You can go to gas stations uh, and get many of these medications and depending on where you are, you may or may not be able to get advice for them. So if you're in a grocery store, there's no charge for the advice. You just go up to the pharmacist and ask them, uh, based on your condition, uh, what do they recommend. But if you're at a gas station, uh, likely you can only find someone that might be able to point you to where the medicine is, but can't provide you any advice for it. So I am a licensed pharmacist. Uh, I practice in Ankeny, Iowa. Uh, I don't uh, work in a retail pharmacy anymore. I just teach. but I am licensed and uh, someone who can uh, give this advice. So what am I going to go through uh, in this uh, review? So I wrote the book and the book is meant to help students learn how to memorize 200 drugs in a specific order so that they can remember all 200 drugs. But in this presentation, I'm only going to record 38 drugs, but I'm going to go into some detail. And all 38 of these are over-the-counter medications. Uh, they can be bought without a prescription. There are some asterisks. For example, pseudofedrin or pseudofed requires that uh, you present an identification, a driver's license, something like that. And the insulins are probably in the refrigerator uh, behind the counter, behind the pharmacy counter, but the regular and uh, NPH insulin you can get without a prescription. So let me go into the medications uh, as I do with my other slides. Um, and then after this overview, uh, we'll go one by one through the medicines. Uh, and I, I say one by one, but really it's almost two by two because I've always paired the medication uh, with something else in its class or something very similar. So with the gastrointestinal medications, we start with calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide. Uh, both of these are very close to each other on the periodic table, or the calcium and magnesium are. Famotidine and ranitidine, uh, these are two H2 receptor antagonists. However, ranitidine has been pulled from the market. Uh, S-omeprazole and omeprazole, uh, you'll notice the only difference is that ES in the front, uh, and I'll talk about uh, what that difference makes, but it just has to do with uh, having a mirror image of the chemical, and one is supposed to work better than the other. Uh, bismuth subsalicylate, uh, you guys know this is the pink stuff for Pepto-Bismol, and then loperamide is the green stuff, uh, that's uh, Imodium. Uh, both of those are antidiarrheals. Uh, docusate sodium and polyethylene glycol, these both help. Uh, they have some laxative effect, uh, so uh, opposite of the uh, antidiarrheals. Uh, then we go into musculoskeletal, and we've got regular aspirin. I talk about low-dose aspirin later uh, in the cardiovascular section. That's a very different uh, use for the aspirin in a different dosage. Ibuprofen with its profen stem. Uh, there's some other medications uh, that are non-steroidals that also have that stem. Uh, naproxen doesn't have a stem, but the profen and proxen are only off by one letter, uh, so easier to remember that way. Acetaminophen, uh, which is Tylenol, 
or as you might hear in the UK, is paracetamol. Uh, acetaminophen aspirin caffeine. Uh, this is a combination product, uh, better known as Excedrin migraine. And I'll talk about what each of those components is for and how they help uh, with a headache. Under respiratory, and this includes allergies uh, and things like that, uh, diphenhydramine, uh, which you know better as Benadryl, uh, cetirizine, loratadine, and loratadine D. All of these contain antihistamines. Um, we'll talk about uh, first versus second generation there. Uh, the D on the end of that loratadine is for decongestant. That means it contains pseudoephedrine, uh, which is the generic name for pseudoephed. Phenylephrine is uh, generally uh, nasally. You can take it uh, as a nasal preparation, uh, but it also might be represented by uh, the letters P and E at the end of some kind of uh, cold remedy. Oxymetazolin is Afrin, uh, also a nasal spray. Triamcinolone is another nasal spray that is a glucocorticoid, which means that it's a steroid uh, it's going to reduce the inflammation, allergic rhinitis or something like that. Guaifenesin and dextromethorphan, uh, this is Robitussin DM. If it was just guaifenesin, uh, then it would be Mucinex or Robitussin alone. Uh, immune, and there aren't many antibiotics over the counter, but topically uh, those tend to be safe. So neomycin, Polymyxin B and bacitracin all together make neosporin. Butenafine uh, is Lotrimin Ultra. Uh, that's an antifungal where the neomycin, polymyxin, and bacitracin is antibacterial. Dicosinol is an antiviral for an acute infection. And then the influenza vaccine is prophylactic. We want to prevent uh, the influenza virus. Uh, neuro. Again, not many drugs uh, in this category over the counter, but benzocaine and lidocaine as local anesthetics that are topically applied um, are available without a prescription. Meclizine uh, helps with dizziness. Um, and then acetaminophen PM. The acetaminophen is just like Tylenol, and the PM actually stands for diphenhydramine. Um, because that antihistamine causes sedation, causes drowsiness, uh, we can... Uh, see uh, it used uh, for insomnics. Okay. Uh, cardio, uh, so omega-3 fatty ethyl esters, and I'll talk about that ethyl esters is actually a, a prescription product, uh, but omega-3 fatty acids uh, you can find over the counter as fish oil. Uh, niacin is nicotinic acid and also helpful for uh, lowering cholesterol just like the omega-3s. Low-dose aspirin uh, to prevent stroke, prevent heart attack, but at 81 milligrams rather than the 325 milligrams that you would get with the analgesic. Endocrine, um, just three drugs here. So the regular insulin and NPH insulin. Uh, not everyone can afford a trip to the doctor or prescriber, and we need to make insulin available to diabetics uh, regardless if they have uh, some kind of provider so they can walk up to the counter and just get some. Um, I will say though that uh, the needles sometimes are problematic if the patient isn't on file or the patient isn't familiar uh, to the pharmacy. So, uh, But when buying regular insulin in a box of needles that makes perfect sense. Uh, and then levonorgestrel, uh, that just stem lets you know it's a progestin. Uh, this is uh, plan B one step um, to prevent pregnancy.